Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, you're very welcome. This is Reading the Past and I'm Dr Cat. And in today's video, I want to look at another historical mystery. This time, I'm looking at the origins of the Antikythera mechanism. In 1900, a group of sponge divers were working in the waters off the coast of the Greek island of Antikythera. While they were working, they came across a shipwreck. As it would later turn out, this shipwreck was incredibly old, and contained within it were archaeological finds of clearly extraordinary significance. By 1901, most of these finds have been brought up from the water, and they were being housed at the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. In 1902, the year after the discovery and excavation of this shipwreck site off of the coast of Antikythera, the vast majority of the objects that were going to be brought out of the waters have been. At this time, Valerius Stace is the director of the National Archaeological Museum of Athens, and he finds himself sifting through what has been brought to him. He is looking at the artefacts, fragments and objects. One of these fragments catches his eye. As he looks at it closely, he recognises that within it is a gear. The Antikythera mechanism, or at least part of it, has been rediscovered. Valeria Stace, working in 1902, of course, does not have access to the kinds of technology that would be available later. So he makes a fairly logical leap. He looks at this fragment, which he knows has been found in a shipwreck, and he sees that it contains a mechanism. For him, the logical leap is that what he holds in his hand is either a navigational tool or perhaps an astronomical clock. These are things that could be used by sailors to help them as they made their way across the high seas. Investigations and analysis of the shipwreck itself have concluded that the ship was most likely a Roman cargo ship. Nevertheless, the Antikythera mechanism which is found on the ship is believed to be most likely Greek in origin. So we have to ask the question, what is this Greek device doing on a Roman ship? The more that Valerius Stace and his colleagues explored what they had in front of them, they realised that there was not simply one fragment of this mechanism. There were a few. And unsurprisingly, since their discovery, the Antikythera mechanism has fascinated a variety of people from all different quarters. Historians, explorers and scientists have all wanted to know how this thing was made, what it was used for and how it got where they found it. But it wasn't until 1959 when this man, Derek J. de Sola Price, who was a Princeton science historian, undertook an in-depth scientific exploration of all of the discovered pieces of the Antikythera mechanism. Writing for the Scientific American, de Sola Price says the following, The mechanism is like a great astronomical clock, or like a modern analogue computer, which uses mechanical parts to save tedious calculation. By the first decade of the 21st century, our technology has, of course, moved on once again. We now have access to powerful X-ray and 3D mapping technology, and these are applied to the Antikythera mechanism. In doing so, we are able to uncover even more of its secrets. For the researchers using these tools to look at the mechanism, they believe that it would have incorporated more than 30 sophisticated gears. They also saw that on the surviving gears, a text had been inscribed. This is the instruction manual for the people using the Antikythera mechanism when it was first made. For an explanation of how this mechanism may have worked, I think that Brian Resnick lays it out the most clearly in his article for Vox Online. He says the following. The mechanism had several dials and clock faces each of which served a different function for measuring movements of the sun, moon, stars and planets, but they were all operated by one main crank. Little stone or glass orbs that would have moved across the machine's face to show the motion of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn and Jupiter in the night sky. The position of the sun and moon relative to the 12 constellations of the zodiac. Another dial forecasting solar and lunar eclipses, and oddly, predictions about their colour. 
Resnick explains that researchers guessed that different coloured eclipses were considered omens of the future. The ancient Greeks were a little superstitious. And with this in mind, perhaps one of the purposes for the Antikythera mechanism was almost as a fortune teller. It also contained a solar calendar, charting the 365 days of the year. A lunar calendar, counting the 19-year lunar cycle. A tiny pearl-sized ball that rotated to show you the phase of the moon. And, as he says, this is pretty neat, another dial of the mechanism that counted down the days to regularly scheduled sporting events around the Greek Isles, like the Olympics. In 2006, this plan was created. It lays out the schematics of how the Antikythera mechanism might have gone together and how it may have worked. Off of the base of this, a series of models of the Antikythera mechanism have been produced and indeed continue to be produced. The Antikythera mechanism, which these reproductions are based upon, is dated to the end of the 2nd century BCE. Following nearly a century of exploration of its workings, it is believed that the complexity of the mechanism is of a level that is more commonly found in mechanical objects from the 1600s. Indeed, its components, in some cases, are as intricate as 18th century clocks. Joe Marchant, writing for the Smithsonian magazine online, says the following, Nothing else like this has ever been discovered from antiquity. Nothing as sophisticated, or even close, appears again for more than a thousand years. In this, she is agreeing with the assessment of Derek J. De Sola Price, who did the work on the object in 1959. However, De Sola Price also adds the following. It is a bit frightening to know that just before the fall of their great civilization, the ancient Greeks had come so close to our age not only in their thought, but also in their scientific technology. The investigations that have been undertaken on the Antikythera mechanism have taught us an enormous amount about it. With a century of science behind us, we have learnt, I think, beyond a reasonable doubt, what this device was intended to do. However, that doesn't mean that the mystery is closed. It's not case solved, as far as I'm concerned. I think that there are still so many more questions that need answers. I'm particularly fascinated by the fact that the Antikythera mechanism almost seems to be an object out of time. We are told repeatedly that the skills and knowledge needed to make this device would not be visible again in history for another thousand years. So how did these ancient people have those skills? Or perhaps the question we should be asking is, how was this skill and knowledge lost for a millennia? I want to know who the architect or architects of this device were. I want to know where it was intended to be used and also by whom. So let's look at some of the theories. The first theory as to the origins of the Antikythera mechanism that I want to touch on, I'm going to be doing only briefly because as far as I'm concerned, it's the one that really makes the least sense and is the most outlandish. I can understand why some would see it as being fairly believable, however. As I've mentioned, the Antikythera mechanism seems to have appeared a thousand years too early in history. So where does this technology come from? For those who are so minded, they see the most logical explanation is that it's not made on Earth, that it's come from aliens. Individuals from galaxies far, far away have come with their advanced technology and skill and they have brought us this as a gift. It's a lovely story, but for me, it doesn't hold water. We don't know and perhaps never will know who actually designed the Antikythera mechanism, but one person has been suggested as a potential figure who the device can be attributed to. This man, Hipparchus of Nicaea. He was born in around 190 BCE and died in about 120 BCE. He is perhaps most famous as the person who is said to have discovered trigonometry. He was a Greek astronomer, geographer and mathematician. If Hipparchus of Nicaea is responsible for designing something similar to, or even the Antikythera itself, that one that is actually found on the shipwreck, then I think it's important to remember that he is not alone in the ancient world. About a hundred years before he lived, there is another, Archimedes of Syracuse. Now, there is no evidence that he actually designs the Antikythera mechanism. However, his work 
and his studies do seem to be pointed towards things that are very similar to the device. But what is this apparently Greek designed and Greek made mechanism doing on board a Roman trade ship? One suggestion is that it's being brought to Rome for a triumphal procession being held in the honour of Julius Caesar in the 1st century BCE. Another suggestion is that the ship actually contains some of the spoils from the Roman general Sulla's sack of Athens, which occurred either in 87 or 86 BCE. Perhaps this Roman vessel was sunk in the middle of a trade expedition, coming from Turkey to Rome. In short, we don't know. These are some fairly good suggestions. Perhaps, hopefully, others may surface so that we can actually know what this object was doing on board this boat. Although the Antikythera mechanism certainly went to sea, that's how it ends up being found in a shipwreck, for the people who have worked on it and studied it, this is not where it was intended to be used. They do not believe that it was designed for use on ship. And they say this because of the materials that are used to make it. The cogs of the mechanism are made out of bronze, and it seems to have been housed in a box that was a combination of bronze and wood. These metals are not particularly conducive to life at sea. Salt air and sea breeze are not necessarily the best bedfellows with the material of bronze. So we have to ask ourselves, if it's not designed for use at sea, where is it designed to be used? What also seems to be clear because of its size is that it is designed with portability in mind. So this is something that is clearly meant to be moved about, but not moved about for use at sea. A couple of suggested locations where an object like this may have been used is temples or schools. And this suggestion is holding quite a bit of traction at the moment. And it makes some sense to me. The portability of this object makes sense in that context. If you have it in a temple or a school and you wish to move it from room to room, or perhaps even from temple to temple or school to school, I would imagine that portability would be key. Researchers who have been working on the Antikythera mechanism, in particular looking at the writing on the dials of the mechanism, that instruction manual for users that I talked about earlier, have noticed something telling as well. They see more than one hand being used in the writing of these dials. More than one person has written on this product while it's being made. For them, this points to the fact that it may have been manufactured in a workshop, perhaps a family business. If it's made in a workshop, does that also perhaps denote that more than one is being produced at a time? Is there a product run of these things whereby this is the only survivor for us today? And perhaps that's even more realistic if we think about those who might have researched and been the architects of it. If we look at Hipparchus of Nicaea and his predecessor from about 100 years earlier, Archimedes of Syracuse, they are two people that seem to be working on quite similar things. So while this seems like an unusual survivor for us, this one-off piece, this historical oddity and mystery, we may have to come to terms with the fact that there were lots of these or things like this that existed at the time. That the Antikythera mechanism is simply a survivor out of a potential host of other survivors which didn't make it. That this advanced piece of technology, seemingly a thousand years before its time, had many brothers and sisters like it, perhaps doing the same thing, perhaps doing diverse things, all of which as skilled and as advanced as this is, but lost to history. As I mentioned earlier, the Antikythera mechanism was designed to do a number of things. It was designed to chart the movement of the solar system, but also the passage of time. To do this accurately, these devices would need to be calibrated to the location in which it was either made or designed to be used. Researchers looking at how the Antikythera mechanism has been calibrated have come to one conclusion. They think that the most likely location with this in mind is Rhodes. What do you think of the Antikythera mechanism? Had you heard of it before this video? What about those questions that I think are still unanswered about it? Who designs it? Who builds it? Is it the same person? Who is it designed for? And where are they going to use it? I'd love to know your thoughts on this in the comments section down below, or you can come and find me over on my social media. I'll leave links to my Instagram and Twitter in the description box so you can follow me there and we can continue this conversation. 
I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then let me know by hitting the thumbs up. Please also subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon next to it so that YouTube will tell you when I've next uploaded. I hope you're going to have a great day, whatever you're doing, and I look forward to speaking to you in my next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.